Salam. I'm checking how many Iranians are here. <laughs> Hi, everyone. First of all, this is an honor for me being here in Netherlands. Although I was told by the FBI not to go, they said that Netherlands is not safe for you. Um, and I said, um, wait a minute, you're telling me to stay in isolated and be isolated, stay at home just because you couldn't kick all the terrorists out from Europe? I'm not gonna stay home. And I refused to be scared. I uh, resisted and that's why I said, um, these days are the second anniversary of Iran protest. And my people in Iran, they go to the street, they know that they may face bullets, torture, prison. They might face executions for the crime of protesting. So two years ago, 1,500 people got killed in Iran. And still their mothers are brave enough to challenge the Islamic Republic. In the West, we have to echo their voices, and that is why I don't want to stay in, in America, especially I want to come in Europe and talk about women's rights and human rights because the European government have a good relation with the Islamic Republic. So I invited to be here to talk about my story, and um, I'm going to be honest with you. Someone just asked me that when you were a kid, uh, in a small village, have you ever had a dream to come in Amsterdam and give a talk? I said, when I was a kid in village, I never knew that Amsterdam existed. <laughs> my world was much smaller. And uh, my dream as a kid in a tiny village to a traditional family was just to jump in a beautiful river, to show my hair, to sink, to ride a bicycle, to go to a stadium, to play football, to be my true self which is a crime because I was a girl, because I grew up in Islamic country, and I was told by all the Sharia laws that your brother is allowed to do all these activities, but you cannot because you are a girl. So that is why I started my own revolution from my family's kitchen to be my true self. The kitchen was designed for women. Like the sink was really low because my mother was tinier than my father. So, and I said to myself that we both, my mother and me, work the same as my brother and my father in farm. But why when we come back home that we are the one that we have to wash the dishes, we have to cover ourselves? I'm not going to do that. That is how it started my revolution from my family's kitchen. And... Um, and a lot of people think that, so then how you, you learn to fight against ex, uh, like extremism, against discrimination, against um, like the bad laws? Uh, I have to tell you that we didn't have feminism books in Iran. All the educational system actually were telling us that we are going to be hanged by our hair in heaven. In, in the hell, not heaven. Definitely heaven is not my place. In the hell. And um, through our educational system, we never learned anything. But my mother, who is not even able to read and write, she was my teacher. She was my true feminist teacher. I grew up in a very, very poor family. We didn't have like uh, electricity in our home. And uh, we didn't even have had, like inside bathroom. So the outhouse was in the backyard garden. So during the night, you had to go as a little girl to use the outhouse. And it was scary. It was black, pitch, like pitch black, if such a thing is possible. And uh, my mom used to tell me that darkness is like a monster. If you're scared of the darkness, then the darkness can swallow you all. The darkness can devour you. But instead of being scared of the darkness, if you stare into the darkness, if you open your eyes as wide as you can, then you can defeat the darkness. As a kid, when I used to the outhouse, going to the darkness, I used to open my eyes as wide as I could. And it worked. And I thought this is a fact. So for me, like a woman in the Middle East, we experienced a lot of darkness in our life. 
And I use this tactic to defeat the darkness. For me as a woman, I was the first woman in my small village who got kicked out from high school just because of asking too much question. I actually ch challenged my teacher about the existence of God as a teenager, and I got kicked out. I was the first woman who got divorced, and that was like a scandal. I was the first woman who got like finally into parliament to be a journalist, critical journalist, but at the end I got expelled from Iranian parliament just because of exposing the corruption. I was the first woman who got in jail just because of, again, asking so many questions. And when I was in prison, I found out that I was pregnant. So how I defeated all, how I had to fight against all this darkness just opened my eyes as wide as I could. But many people think that, okay, this is inside Iran. So I left Iran when I came to the West the darkness came with me, even in the West. And I'm going to tell you why and when. I started a campaign against compulsory job in 2014. And that was actually, I didn't have any plan. I just started to talk about my own experiences. I published a picture with a caption. Anytime when I run in a beautiful country and I feel the wind in my hair, it just reminds me of the time when this... Big hair was like a hostage in the hands of the government in Iran. And uh, immediately I received a lot of comments from women envying at my freedom, like saying, I wish we had the same freedom. I said, wait a minute. We, the women of Iran, if the government or the men or anyone tell us not to do something, anyway, we do it. I'm sure that you have the same pictures. And um, would you want to share it with me? I got bombarded by photos and videos from women unveiling themselves, walking unveiled, which is a punishable crime, and bravely challenging the regime. Many people actually, especially men, especially Western asking like, but in the Middle East there are so many bigger problems. Why you just make it a big deal? We are not fighting against a small piece of cloth. We are fighting against one of the most important pillar of a religious dictatorship. And I'm going to give you an example. When the women got free from ISIS, do you remember what was the main image went viral around the world? You remember? Women taking off their veil and burning them. So the day when women of Iran took to the street and burned compulsory hijab is the day that the Islamic Republic won't exist. Because compulsory job is a tool in the hand of Taliban, ISIS, and the Islamic Republic to control the whole society. And I want to give you another example. When Taliban took over Afghanistan overnight, I was receiving videos from women from Afghanistan, beautiful and brave. And I said to one of the women that I'm going to blur your face and publish the video. One of the women said, don't blare my face. This is what Taliban does to us. So you see, compulsory job is taking our visibility back. It is against our dignity. And that's why we are fighting against it. And that's why you see a lot of brave women in Iran challenging the regime by removing their hijab. But I'm not going to give you a false um, address. It's not every time about victory. The government hated this campaign. And they did everything to crush me, to break me, and break women inside Iran. They arrested 29 women only in one day. Twen Just imagine if not 21 women, if only one woman got arrested here in Netherlands for wearing hijab. What would the rest of the world do? That happened in Iran. The rest of the world just watched us. 29 women got arrested. And the rest of the world sent their representative, the member of the parliament in Iran, obeying the same discriminatory laws. So and that didn't stop women. Sabah Kordafshari was only 20 years old. She received 24 years prison sentence, more than her age. Yasaman Aryani was only 22 years old. She received 16 years prison. You think that stopped them? 
the mothers joined them. I felt guilty and burden on my shoulder, and I thought, I'm going to stop the movement. As soon as the mothers, Yasaman and Sabah's mother, they went to the street and they filmed themselves and they said, we are the voice of our daughters. I said, this is not about me. This is about millions of fearless women within the society. They just want me to be their voices. So the government found that they're not going to break the women. They started to break me. They went after my family. They interrogated my 70-year-old mother. They brought my sister on TV to disown me publicly. You work for the biggest television in, in Netherlands. You understand that 17 minutes, it's a lot. You're not even giving me two minutes for your show. Sev <laughs> 17 minutes, I was watching my sister disowning me. I was watching my sister denouncing me, saying that I don't believe what my sister says, like in America. Wait a minute. The supreme leader of Iran, the Ayatollah's children do not, some of them, believe what they say. Would you bring them on TV to denounce the supreme leader of Iran? The Ayatollah's sister was against him. But why you brought my sister? Because they want to break me. That didn't work, as you see. They arrested my brother. They put him in prison for two years. The day when they put my brother in prison, the day when they put the Women of White Wednesday's campaign in prison was like the end of my life. I was like, I wish I was in prison, not them, because you feel the, the burden on your shoulder. And I was broken. But I told myself that, why should I feel guilty? The one who executes people should feel guilty. The one who lashes women for removing a job or saying that we don't want to practice Islam, they should feel guilty. The one who torture people to death, they should feel guilty. I'm not going to give up. I'm not going to keep silent. So I kept doing what I did. The government made a new law to keep me silent. The head of the Revolutionary Court said that if anyone send videos to Massey, Alina Jod will be charged up to 10 years prison. Can you believe that? You're all now criminal because you're filming me now. 10 years prison. This is 21st century. And I was bombarded by videos, this time from mothers, holding the pictures of their beloved one who got killed in Iran protests, sending videos to me and saying that we rather go to prison. We don't want to be silent. We want to get rid of the Islamic Republic, and you have to be our voice. And these are my heroes. And these are the Rosa Parks of Iran, the women of suffragists in Iran. They say no to Islamic Republic in the face of the mullahs and clerics in Iran. And they gave me hope to come here and continue my fight. You have to see their faces when they send me videos. Pain and power, the symbol of the women of the Middle East. And I want to tell you the last story that why we are so powerful and I strongly believe that we have to give the voice to ordinary women. My personal story. I was in London. There was a pro-regime guy came to me and said that, you ugly woman, why are you ruining the face of Iran by going everywhere, every country, and saying that Iran is bitterning up women? You know that? You're ruining the image of Iran. I said, wait a minute. I'm not the one ruining the image of Iran. Those mullah telling you that you own your wife, you and your wife, if you accept that, you are ruining the image of Iran with the clerics, with the mullahs. Those actually who are telling that in 21st century women are not allowed to go to a stadium and a woman should set herself on fire and kill herself, you have to get those mullahs. They are ruining the image of Iran, not me. He was not convinced. You are convinced, no? But he was not convinced. That didn't bother me. What bothered me, he called me ugly. And I was like, this is actually a weapon for men who want to patronize a woman. They call them ugly. First of all, I'm not an ugly woman. In the eyes of my son, I'm sure that I'm the most beautiful mother. In the eyes of my mother, I'm the most beautiful daughter. And in the eyes of my husband, I think I'm the most beautiful woman. <laughs> and I went after him with this argument. I believed myself. I used my camera. And I ran after him. I said, Repeat what you said in front of my camera. Just repeat it. Guess what? He couldn't. Why? 
because I was filming him and exposing him, exposing his violence against me. So I won the battle. And I asked the women of Iran, do the same. If someone comes to you and harass you, or even want to arrest you, just film them. My camera is my weapon. For 40 years, we, the women of Iran, had the fear inside us. You were watching a lot of women were running away from morality police, screaming. Now go and Google the hashtag, my camera is my weapon. The morality police and the harassers are running away. Women saying that, hey, I'm not gonna cover myself. This is none of your business and filming them. This is the true feminism. And I hope I can send this message to the member of the parliament here, to the ministers here, all the female politicians in Europe, just be as brave as Iranian women and women of Afghanistan and stand up for your own dignity. Thank you so much.